and then after this creation science goes away in in that incarnation anyway it goes away as a legal strategy and uh, then they kind of went ambiguous on us after that with the advent of the intelligent design movement which you know uh, a decade or so later uh, because and, it wasn't but actually actually it's it's good that you mentioned McLean and ID because the intelligent design movement started forming actually in the early 80s more as a result to McLean than anything else. It was clear that the, you know, McLean had been such a, a thorough route of creation science. I mean, people like Gould and Dalrymple and, and the rest just so totally squashed it as a, any sort of possible, possibly viable scientific idea that there were a number of both creation science as well as old earth creationists uh, who were thinking, you know, we got to come up with something new. We got to come up with something new. Yeah. And so during the early 80s, 80 to about 85 or 86, there were, there were a number of conferences that were held by um, anti-evolutionists, we'll call them, both young earth and old earth, to try to devise some sort of a replacement for creation science. And this was actually before the Supreme Court said this is junk. But it was clear from McLean that it, it wasn't going to work. Um, and that's, that's how intelligent design evolved. And intelligent design, like I said, was a little bit ambiguous because they didn't overtly advertise the thing as a, as a religious idea. Right. Although anyone with half a brain knows who or what the intelligent designer is or is supposed to be. It's not hard. And then on uh, December 20th, 2005, um, the Kitzmiller case. Right. And uh, we had um, a conservative judge, no less, federal judge, uh, basically scold the ideas for being so disingenuous. Um, they had a come to Jesus meeting, if you will. Uh, what was your involvement with the Kitzmiller case? <sighs> From very early in the game. Um, We'd been following Dover, Pennsylvania for a couple of years. Back in, you know, like 2003, 2004, uh, there, there had been these little sort of bubbling up of anti-evolutionism in various ways. And they had elected a conservative school board, a couple of members of the school board that were kind of pushing about getting creationism in. Uh, then uh, they were uh, seduced, shall we say, uh, by uh, some intelligent design proponents, not the Discovery Institute, by the way. They, they didn't want this trial at all. I mean, they, they really you know, did not like this approach. But um, intelligent design proponents managed to persuade a couple of the board members to really push to get intelligent design into the curriculum. And they ended up buying this uh, Of Pandas and People book, and they passed a policy requiring intelligent design, and the teachers just, you know, we're having a fit. They tried to compromise, but the school board was just uh, uh, impossible to deal with. And a number of uh, citizens and with whom we were dealing decided they, they just needed to sue. I mean, there was no... Rec the last thing you want to do is go to court. Trust me on this. I mean, it's, it's expensive, it's time-consuming, it's exhausting, it tears apart communities, it tears apart marriages. I mean, the last thing you want to do is go to court. It's just... It's just the final, uh, the final uh, 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 effort after you've tried everything else. And that's where we were in Dover. Um, but if you have to go to court, go to court with a case like Dover. Absolutely. Because it was, it was just the ideal situation for us. Um, more in retrospect than anything else. But um, the Dover policy that they passed uh, did two things. It um, promoted intelligent design, and it also promoted teaching the, in the phrase of the policy, gaps slash problems in Darwin's theory, which is the evidence against evolution, strengths and weaknesses, you know, the denigration of evolution component of, of modern anti-evolutionism. So it's a twofer. And we figured, I mean, the, the bigger problem, frankly, for us is the evidence against evolution strategy. Um, intelligent design, as you pointed out, has enough of a paper trail. You can trace it back to creation science. It, it takes work to do that, but we knew we had the, you know, we had the goods on them. We'd been following this for a couple decades now. You can show that intelligent design is a form of creationism, and because the courts have said creationism can't be taught, it's over. But the strengths and weaknesses type of, you know, gaps, problems in Darwin's theory uh, kind of, of component 
is a lot harder to deal with unless you have the context of creationism. Now, the fact that both of these policies were together meant that we could tie one around the other and sink them both. And that is eventually the strategy that, that, that was settled upon. But our involvement was um, uh, helping to put together the legal team uh, because it consisted of uh, Vic Volchek from the uh, Pennsylvania ACLU who called me and said, I suppose you've heard about Dover? Yes, we've heard about Dover. Uh, we put him together with one of my legal advisory committee members who was Eric Rothschild mm -hmm. of uh, Pepper Hamilton. And Eric was fabulous. He brought in his whole firm. They were the pro bono uh, company. They were the deep pockets. And Pepper just, you know, was, was well, magnificent. And, and, and boy, were you guys ready. I, I, watching all the videos that came mm -hmm. out of that and reading all the, the, the literature on it, uh, it was like the New York Yankees going up against a t-ball team, and I don't know why I have baseball on the mind today, but <laughs> but that's how strong your case was yeah. uh, against theirs. Yeah. And you, uh, you're right. I have to be thinking that that the ideas were sitting there going, what have we gotten ourselves into? We can't we can't do anything against that. Well, I'm sure. I'm not sure, but my my hypothesis uh, is that that is why the um, Discovery Institute bailed. Um, they could uh, read the writing on the wall. So I, I think they could, yeah. And, and also they were having disagreements with the, um, um, the Michigan-based um, uh, legal institution that uh, actually talked uh, or, or you know, persuaded the board members to, to take this, this row and who, who were defending them um, uh, pro bono. They, they, they clearly had some differences of opinion with them about the strategy. And of course, the, the Discovery Institute does not want policies like Dover's where uh, you uh, require the teachers to teach intelligent design. They don't want that kind of top-down. It's okay if the teachers do it on their own, of course, but what they really want are these uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses policies, the uh, uh, teach the evidence against evolution policies, because they know it's legally uh, uh, less vulnerable than, than something like intelligent design. Mm -hmm.